the challenge really is, um, it, Mexico is a big country, it's a very complex country. Um, and it also operates fairly state level, municipal uh, level in a very um, independent way. So, um, and we have sectorial and, and you know, differences. So to be able to establish a policy that will talk to not only healthcare you know, or oil and gas or energy or the economy and so on, um, really was to start thinking more horizontally. So how can we um, provide an ICT policy that talks to all these sectors and brings value to them so that they could actually even open the door for us? Because as we operate independently and as we build these walls, we're also open for a more, um, for, for a conversation that, that's based on best practices and efficiencies. President Peña set out um, very early on in the administration to uh, create um, an, a unit inside the office of the president called the coordination, the National Digital Strategy, Strategy Coordination Unit. And what it, what it does is coordinate any and all digital efforts across the federal government. So uh, not the, the budgets and the initiatives are held inside the ministries, but then if there are um, efficiencies that could be built, sectorial ones or, 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 or um, horizontal ones, then we could actually provide that value to the different uh, agencies. So part of it was um, an ongoing concern that we couldn't um, interoperate in the best way possible. And this happens um, across the board in many applications, in many infrastructure builds, not only on, you know, in the healthcare sector and so on and so forth, but it was happening all across. We were duplicating investments or expenditures, and we were duplicating the applications that we were buying with that, with that budget. So the, um, the, the first stake or the first interest that we took uh, with open source was to be able to, to establish a, a practice more than selecting a technology, a practice that will be open, a practice that it doesn't matter what type of technology you're using, it's going to be all there to be open, to be interconnected, to be more valuable than only its sole, um, you know, um, starting purpose. We have a um, very segregated ecosystem, IT ecosystem within the federal government in Mexico. That means, of course, we made our own choices inside each of the ministries to which technology could serve us best. And I think that's the right approach to do so. Now, when you, we're drawing a, a federal policy and we want to interconnect better and we're pushing um, or uh, positioning um, a hub so that a citizen can actually consume or exploit or enjoy digital services via a single portal, then we need to have a proper mechanism to be able to connect to the different agencies. So what OpenStack is giving us is um, an open standard to connect to different technologies um, so that we can actually bring that value back to the citizen. So we, as I said, we're not really selecting technology per se. We're not selecting a vendor. What we're doing is taking advantage of the decisions that we're taking at the ministry level and then being able to interconnect amongst themselves. The effort there, there is massive. The, um, and the, the results that we already have um, within a couple of years are actually proving them, themselves, out, themselves out on the education front, on the healthcare sector, um, on the telecom sector as well, um, via the reforms that, uh, that, are being, um, that were drafted, signed, and now we're actually executing. There are 6,500 uh, online services that will be deployed uh, towards the end of, uh, of this administration. Um, now, the first thing we set out to do was to actually know what the services were, to inventory, and then to, to actually draft some uh, practices, manuals, or um, to, to collaborate with the different ministries because they are very different amongst themselves. So healthcare services to um, Ministry of the Economy services, for example, to set out a new company or to exercise uh, or, or to report taxes, declare taxes, or to, they're very different services, but each of the agency actually knows them very well. And they were able to, to, um, to put them through an API, through a consolidation standpoint or to interoper interoperability hub. So we mapped those services out. So me as citizen, uh, me, Victor Laguna, as a citizen, could actually log in into a portal. And if I'm 
just booking an appointment to get my passport or setting up a new company, I will be able to do so through a single portal. The reality is, is also on the communication standpoint. So uh, websites, government websites, um, very segregated. We, we had around 4,000 you know, federal government websites that we consolidated that into one. So we can only have a, like a search engine type uh, website in which we actually find what we're looking for. Everything from, um, from really uh, booking the appointment to get your passport all the way into um, understanding where your closest hospital is or um, setting up a new company, you'll be able to do so in there. The, the, re the value behind it is that we're not consolidating all the information in one single point. And that's very, uh, it's very valuable, but it's also very scary to do so, if we were to do so, because we not only become a single point of contact to the citizen, but we aggregate all the, we we we, be, we would be aggregating all the information, thing that we're not doing. So we're taking into account Privacy Act, we're taking into account the Transparency Act, and we're only exposing those services in a, in the most secure way possible to the citizen. So they avoid making the same line in different agencies and going to going there and back um, and having an agency asking for the same information. So the philosophy behind it is we already know as government your birth certificate because you already gave it once. So do not ask it twice. And um, via the technology behind it, we would be able to provide that. And instead of you or I, a citizen going into an office eight times, then cutting down into two times, and there's a huge value in, in that. So we set out um, a year and a half ago with, with the whole process. And it's, you know, it sounds a lot of time, but really the, the effort has never been done. And also you said, you know, the perception or reality around uh, um, how we move as government. Um, it's, it's, it's true, but it's also, it it's also make, makes some sense on the cyclicality of contracts and the, the complexity of applications and the complexity inside many of these ministries. So now we're at a point that, and we should be at a point because by presidential decree, August 3rd, we're launching gov.mx, which is our single um, window for online services. Um, and then from there, we're gonna be ramping up more and more services. It doesn't mean that we're gonna have everything on August 3rd, it just means that we'll have the first online service ready, readily available to, to citizens. We understood priorities based on a couple of consulting engagements that we actually um, um, got help with. We didn't want to make decisions just based on, on gut, but, um, but uh, on information. And really, the single most sought after service is birth certificate, inside and out the country. So Mexico, it's a, it's, it's a very interesting ecosystem because outside the country, there are around 30 million um, compatriots or Mexican people living in the US alone. And they do need services without having to go back to the country. What I intend to say is we go through the same challenges and we, we, we need to find solutions for them. Uh, government mean, be, being very complex and having very limited budgets towards ICT, um, needs to be very creative um, and innovative in the solutions that we deploy. So we get help with the, with the whole sector, the industry, the, acad the academy, and so on. What, one thing that we were not doing uh, correctly, and now it's, it's actually proving very successful, is running public challenges. So we understand the situation, we understand the problematic around it, and we just share it through an, to an ecosystem. We're not prescribing the type of solution. We're not saying we want this technology to help us deliver this solution. We, help, we, we just inform the ecosystem to bring that value to us. So what it was, for example, a tender for a, either a million dollar solution, and we got five people interested or five parties interested. Now we're getting 150 companies interested in bidding for that contract. And we're getting massive value out of it because you get everything from the, 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 the students that are coding in open source, all the way into your, your regular channels, bidding for the same contract, and you're getting more or less the same value. So it's, it's kind of um, equalizing the play field, if I can call it like that. And, um, and also, it's, it's making us understand, in reality, that we can solution a lot with not a lot of, uh, of budget allocated to it. And in these macroeconomic situations is what Mexico needs. We first 
sort out uh, OpenStack around six months ago. And, uh, and we're, we're really uh, in touch with many of um, the, the, the cloud orchestration um, you know, players. Um, we do have installations of other, other mechanisms and other orchestration um, services. OpenStack for us at that time, and while, the, while this assessment process is going, um, it's proven that the decision is heading in the right direction. So what I, what, the only thing I can share with you at this point, I guess, is we're, we're, we're trusting that OpenStack is the orchestration mechanism that we need right now to deploy um, online services cloud and hopefully what could become the cloud ecosystem of the Mexican government. So private, um, hybrid, and, and, and public cloud um, interaction. The Walmart team is, you know, was kind enough to share with me that you know, in their high transaction, um, high secure environment, how they actually deal with these complex environments. And um, the reality is sometimes you, know, you build a big cloud, host everything there, sometimes you separate clouds to avoid you know, um, disruption or, uh, or bigger outages than, than you could actually afford. It is ambitious, but it's also a part of a bigger um, ecosystem. So we've been working together with, with uh, all the federal agencies so that they are up to date in the way that they're, they're, they're build their own processes and the way that they will be exposing their own services to this hub. So it's not building a massive infrastructure that will host everything. So we believe that's the right approach. And uh, when we're putting our, our effort into that with um, the support of the industry. Um, the second one, and what keeps me awake, is um, information security. So part of it is you know, maintaining infrastructure up, um, you know, that you build redundancies and, and, and you, you replicate services, you expose those to, to citizens. But um, in our journey, we need, to, um, we need to talk about information security and we need to deploy it in the right way. So security as a philosophy and security driving many of these uh, installations so that at the end, the service gets consumed and joy uh, by the citizen in the most secure way possible. The private laws in Mexico are very strong. They're actually quite cutting edge. Um, so we have the, the Privacy Act that operates um, in very similar way to the one to you and on the US uh, and in Canada. Um, and then we have the Transparency Act. So the Transparency Act actually like, dictates the way that we manage our operations and, and, and our, our information, government information. And then, of course, the Privacy Act is, dictates how we should um, manage a citizens' data. Um, and you know, everything from top secret all the way down to you know, financial information, healthcare information, and so on and so forth. So the law is there. We're just uh, using the law to drive behavior or drive the guidelines to ensure that, that we set up the right level of criticality and sensitivity to, to the data so we know where to put it. We actually in build incentives around going to Google Apps and ensuring that you're, that you're not managing 180 on-premise email servers because we believe our skills our talent should be used for mission critical apps and for citizen oriented services and not to manage certain infrastructure that's not giving us the value that, 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 that it should have. We're ramping up. We're building small, we're testing the case, and then we're building up. So, uh, and that's one of the things about, that I like about, about um, OpenStack, that it let us build and then escalate. It let us build, test, um, and then via agile, um, de an agile deployment, being able to grow fast. Uh, the other part of that is that we don't have a lot of budgets to these type of solutions. So we need to test the case on, a, on production and then ramp it up. We know the ecosystem in Mexico. It's the first time that we've been uh, in, 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 this, in, in this event. Um, and we're getting a lot of support from, uh, from the ecosystem, meaning um, we don't solution ourselves everything. We do get the help from the industry uh, in ensuring that what we're thinking or doing, it's, do, it's done in a collaborative approach. So really taking the philosophy of OpenStack into kind of the human interaction. Um, and uh, it's working well. 
Um, as I said, we're building capacity as we build skills, but we're also bringing the skills from the industry to be able to, to shield ourselves better and build a better solution um, wholly and in a collaborative approach. Most of my life I've been in the private enterprise sector, you know, a couple of years in government, and the recurrent um, feedback that we get is uh, that budgets are not being allocated in the best way possible. And not only that, but they're not being used um, rightfully. So, and, you know, the answer is we duplicate a lot. We multiplicate, you know, application development, et cetera, et cetera. So what gets me uh, really excited and really passionate about this project is that we didn't want to build a massive solution with a massive budget. We actually set out to do a small piece in which all the agencies can interconnect that drives citizen value. And if we can do so by demonstrating the business case, return on X, return investment of the budget, then we can actually get more budgets towards mission critical citizen centric applications. Um, and that's what really the core of, of our day to day um, lies.